Hello again, everyone. Uh, this will be my third and final video of the day, I promise. Um, but I did want to cover one last topic. The last two videos were about uh, how to hold the violin comfortably without a shoulder rest and how to comfortably hold the violin with a shoulder rest or a shoulder pad. Um, the one thing that I didn't talk about very thoroughly in either of these videos is the chin rest. Um, chin rests are hit and miss. It's a very confusing topic because some people seem to have no preference. Um, I used to try very hard to find a comfortable chin rest. I have a pile next to me of nearly 20, um, and I know I've given some of them away. Um, and uh, additionally, um, aside from the chin rest, I tried a number of chin rest cloths and gels and, uh, I think Dr. Scholl's moleskin, kind of a soft and fuzzy um, cover, anything to try and make it more comfortable. And I never really did until I found uh, the shoulder rest, or in my case, lack thereof, um, that was comfortable for me. Once I learned how to hold the violin uh, by resting it on my collarbone, looking to the left, looking down and pulling back just a tiny bit, Sometimes, if you watch the other videos, you may see that sometimes I, I arch my back just slightly to get the instrument more flat and more level. And I also fill in the gap either with a, uh, with a shoulder rest that will, or a pad that will fill in the gap, or I support it more with my, my thumb and my left hand. Um, so that's how I hold the instrument now. And doing that, using that approach, I don't seem to... Uh, notice the chin rest very much. It, it, as long as there's something, um, some sort of a friction, some sort of something to grip onto, um, even if there's no chin rest, even if it's just uh, sort of the very tip end of the, the tailpiece, um, that's enough for me. However, at the other end of the spectrum, you have people for whom the, the chin rest matters extensively, and uh, some people find that they, they can't even play um, the way they want to play at all if they don't have the chin rest that they're used to or that they prefer. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit, about, a little bit about that and why that is and how to find the chin rest that is comfortable and ideal, quote unquote, ideal um, for you, at least for now. I find many people who have a favorite chin rest um, will change it up over time as they grow, as they age. Um, you know, as our bodies change, we, we start to prefer slight different uh, shapes and variations on the chin rest to make it more comfortable. Um, so this is mine. Um, admittedly, uh, this is kind of a strange one. It's a little bit custom. It's, uh, it's a date wood chin rest that came with this particular set of pegs and tailpiece um, on this instrument. Um, and it was, the shape of it was modified just ever so slightly by a uh, violin maker and restorer in Ann Arbor, Michigan, by the name of Sharon Q. Um, her last name, I believe, is just the letter Q, Sharon Q, I think. Um, I do recommend her. If you, if you need violin work done, there are, actually, there are a number of really great people to work on stringed instruments in Ann Arbor, um, she happened to modify this chin rest ever so slightly for me, and I find it very comfortable. Um, so that that may be one option to have a, a violin maker near you sort of customize one if you need that. Um, uh, I first had this one kind of modified many years ago when I couldn't find anything that was comfortable. And uh, since then, I've learned how to hold the instrument um, more comfortably, and uh, I, I think... Uh, it doesn't matter so much anymore. I've left it on this instrument kind of out of convenience. Um, I have borrowed instruments for concerts. I have borrowed my friend's instruments. I have borrowed instruments when my own was being repaired. Um, and I've never swapped out the, the chin rest. Um, I've just left whatever was on and I find them all comfortable. But you may not. So let's talk about how to find that. Um, so if you... Hold it in kind of the way that I was recommending holding it in the previous two videos. That is, rest it on the collarbone, look to the left, look down, pull back just a little bit so there's a little bit of friction. Uh, you may find that there's not nearly enough there um, to, 
comfortably support the instrument. What most people do in this situation is they buy a shoulder rest. Um, most people will go straight to a coon or a wolf and they'll stick it on and uh, they will, I'll get mine actually. So most people will get a shoulder rest like this, stick it on, put the shoulder rest along the shape of their uh, chest, put it right there and then fit everything else to that and say, this isn't so bad. Now it's comfortable. Um, and it is for a short period of time. You'll find that the minute I do this, I put the shoulder rest down and then I stick my neck up and I stick it in to fit it in the jaw shape of the chin rest. And you'll notice my neck is very far forward. There's a lot of tension here in my shoulder. Um, the, in the shoulder pad is actually being lifted up because it's sort of like a, uh, uh, a lever, <laughs> a seesaw where I'm pressing down so far here that this comes up. Um, and so after a period of time, most people will find that this isn't comfortable. And so then they start shopping for a shoulder rest and they go through all kinds of them. I did exactly the same thing for years, actually. And I tried many, many different things. Um, often, I think the problem can be solved with a different chin rest. Um, uh, so even if you do have a shoulder rest, that's fine. But I still recommend putting the violin down on the collarbone, looking to the left, looking down, pulling back. If you have a shoulder rest there, that's fine. Um, but if you still find that this part on your jaw isn't comfortable, that's when I would recommend um, looking for a chin rest. I might recommend trying to change the chin rest before the shoulder rest. Um, so step one is, uh, I think, actually to raise the chin rest up. Um, often that is a good solution. Simply the chin rest is sometimes too low. You can see here on this chin rest there's cork right there. You see that cork? Um, it is absolutely possible and easy to add more cork and raise up the height. I have a tiny, tiny bit of extra. Um, it's probably been squished over the years. If you look at mine, uh, maybe from the side, you can see there's a little tiny bit of extra cork um, that raises mine up, I don't know, maybe a millimeter or something. Some people will do this quite far. They'll raise it up maybe half an inch. And that's quite all right, whatever works. Um, one of my first violin teachers had uh, maybe that much cork, near, well, probably three quarters of an inch of cork raising up her chin rest, and she didn't play with a, a shoulder pad, and she found that very comfortable. Uh, that might be the solution. If it's not, if you find that there's just, there's got, there's got to be something wrong fundamentally with the shape of your chin rest and it's not comfortable, look at what kind you have. There's basically three kinds in a nutshell. There are kinds like this that go only to the left. You can see if I overlap it, it only stays to the left side of the chin rest and doesn't go over the tailpiece. That's one. See if you have one of those. Here's another one. Another one of those. It stays only on this side. Um, mine has a little piece that goes over uh, the uh, tailpiece. Um, See if you have one of those, that's kind of type two. And then type three is what we call a center mount. Uh, it looks like that. Um, it goes, if you take a look at it, it goes right over the middle and there's a, there's a big sort of place for your jaw right in the middle. Um, there are other slight variations of this. Here's one, here's another variation. Um, same thing, goes right in the middle. Um, <laughs> And I think I even have one more. Here's another. Same thing. This one's uh, a little bit off to the side still, um, but mounts in the middle. Um, so those are some options for those. There are more of these as well that have the, the side that go over the middle. So regardless of what specific type you're using, I would switch uh, to try those three fundamental shapes. I'll hold them up for you together if I can. Uh, side mount, center mount, and uh, the center mount that goes over with the little bar, like that. Um, usually people will prefer one of these three types, and once you find which type you prefer, from there you can really specify um, something more specific. So often what I do 
with my students. I have gone sh uh, chin rest shopping with my students before. It's quite fun. If you find that you're not comfortable, um, maybe ask your own teacher, even a school teacher. Um, sometimes uh, I, I know some of my friends who work as, as school teachers um, kind of enjoy a chance to, to get out of the, the school for a little bit um, on a weekend or something and help some of the students with things like this outside of class. Um, so you may have some luck with your, your school teacher if you don't have a private teacher. Um, other than that, you can ask friends, family, colleagues, whoever you want, um, and go to any old uh, string shop, string supply shop, and see what chin rest they have. See if you can find one of these three types, a side, one with a bar going over, and a center mount. And then put them all on, one at a time, and hold the instrument the same way. Rest it on collarbone, look to the left, look down, pull back, and before you even put on the shoulder rest, see how that feels. If that's terribly uncomfortable, slightly more comfortable, or pretty comfortable. And from there, maybe you can add the shoulder rest or shoulder pad and see if that fills in the gap sufficiently so that you're comfortable. Um, but that's a, that's a fun way to narrow down the shape of chin rest that you want. Once you find your sort of fundamental shape, the bar, the side, or the center, um, there are usually many, many options between those. Um, there are at least three or four different kinds of center mounts. I have three of them here. There's this sort of standard mount um, without a hump. <laughs> um, there is another one, I don't have one handy, I'm sure I do, but not handy, with a, a sort of lump in the middle so you can rest your chin on either side if you have a slight preference of leaning to one side or the other. This one here has this kind of shape there. Um, this is useful for people who like to stay slightly off to the side or who like to rest their entire jaw sort of in, in it like that. That may be useful. And then there's this one, uh, which is, is comfortable um, for some people uh, who don't like the, the severe lip that some uh, chin rests do have. You can see this lip is sort of very shallow and, and mild. Um, so that's comfortable. There's many of these. I think this is a Strad, quote-unquote, model um, with the bar. And this is a Guarneri, quote-unquote, model with the bar. Slightly different, slightly, this one's slightly deeper. There's many of these. There's probably hundreds of them. I only have maybe five or six here. Um, and then there are some options. Oh, this is a, another nice one. This one's called a Tika. This one's got kind of a cup. It is a side mount that goes over slightly more than uh, some of the others. You can see, if I put it here, it's a side mount and it goes slightly more over the tailpiece. Um, some people really like this. This is a bit of a unique one. I think Julia Fisher uses one of these, if I remember correctly. Um, some people prefer this. Might be worth uh, trying. Um, there's a few custom ones. If you really, really have a hard time, um, there are a few... Uh, you can simply Google online custom chin rests. Um, some of them have kits. You can uh, take your measurements and see what uh, you like. This was a custom one for me. Um, some of them are fairly expensive. I think this one was. I think this one was maybe $100 or something. Um, and curiously, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> um, but I did for some period of time. You see this one's got this big lump on it right there, which was useful for me um, uh, because I found that it's sort of I got a sort of hook. I got a little hook there where um, I didn't have to squeeze down. I just it sort of felt like it caught on my jaw. And I found that comfortable for a period of time. Um, this is a particularly old one. Uh, I don't know that you can get these custom anymore. It looks like this. Um, also, similar to the Tika, you can see it goes over the tailpiece just a little bit. It's very rounded. The lip is very rounded. Um, sometimes you'll find old violins, particularly old English violins that will have these Kennedy instruments or Thomas Dodd instruments um, will have some of these. Um, so uh, maybe have a glance at some of the violins that your local shop might have in stock and see if there's a, a kind of wonky chin rest like this that you may like if you can't find anything comfortable. Um, and also some people prefer very small ones. Here's a very, very small one. There are even smaller ones. Uh, there's ones that are basically just a lip. Um, and uh, there's very, very tiny round ones and things. Um, some people find that that's most comfortable for them, something very small. Um, so if you go through the, the process and you can't find one with a bar, you can't find a center mount, you can't find a, a side mount, 
that is comfortable for you, um, try some of the, the wonky ones. See if you can find a custom one or peruse some old violins in the in a local shop and see if there's a, a strange one that you might want to try um, that might be more comfortable for you. So those are my recommendations for shopping for a chin rest. Um, you may find that your preferences will change over time. You may find that eventually you don't have a preference at all. Um, whatever works, whatever is comfortable. Um, so happy chin rest shopping and happy practicing. Hope that helps.